Hi, I received a question about beings which only live once and what is going on with them, how is it that they can or cannot incarnate? Well, <coughs> incarnation is, you could say, a, a privilege. Um, if we look at incarnating into a, a living being, such as yeah, a human, um, it's already a, a position of quite a lot of influence and power and possibility for growth and development. And if this, yeah, you could say these opportunities are wasted, um, yeah, then the universe is not going to continue such waste. So you could say if, for instance, a human cannot really act like a human, they cannot deal with the complexity, they cannot really um, think well, they have no morality, uh, they have no deep feelings, um, then maybe such a human in their next form will become a frog for instance. And even if like the frog form turns out to be too difficult or wasted upon that, uh, that consciousness, then maybe they won't be given a physical form anymore. So you could say it's um, um, it is kind of like an award system. Um, you can grow a little bit in consciousness and if you are good enough you can try to handle a physical form to see what it is like to be uh, in a physical body and to exist like a plant or an animal. Um, but yeah, if you are completely um, trapped because your nature is too low, you're con really consumed by a monomanic thought, um, then it doesn't matter whether you're a human or a stone or a frog if your consciousness is not really up to the task. So then you can lose your right to incarnation and you have to go down to the lower levels of, of yeah, the cosmos or consciousness in these lower vibrations there are no forms in the same sense that we have a physical form so these beings which exist in these lower levels they are usually um, beings who have only a very single vibration they're very simple they don't have our level of complexity and we know them mainly as energetical parasites or sometimes demons, depending on your, your view. So they know only one thing which can be, for instance, pain or fear, and um, they exist within this lower vibration of pain or fear, this is their cosmos, and occasionally they are allowed to peek a little bit into higher worlds, so they can climb up to our dimension, to our world, and it is possible for them to learn there is more than only pain or fear because humans can have more emotions, can have more feelings and if they learn this eventually they can grow and they can evolve into uh, a living being uh, but if they can't then they will just try to recreate what is known to them, what is normal to them so they will try to envelop um, their whole environment, their complete space into well what they know. So if a being which is existing uh, in a state of fear comes here and it will try to yeah, create food for itself, create a home for itself by generating fear in the human they find themselves with because this human can in a way create a whole world of terror for them. Um, so in that way also these lower beings intruding upon our world um, can drag down you could say the consciousness or the vibrational level of our world if they're not controlled or sent away periodically. They are, should be invited here so they have a chance to grow, to learn, to evolve themselves but they should not be allowed to take power over our dimension. Um, our development can also go in an opposite direction. We, instead of like becoming pushed down again, uh, we can also be uplifted. 
that is also possible that we have experienced what the physical form has to offer us and that having more incarnations won't teach us anything new so therefore we don't have to reincarnate anymore these are cases where uh, in a way you've lived a hundred or a thousand lifetimes you've seen all the faces of love, death, war, happiness and sorrow and it all just blends into one big grey mass um, because of your perspective in the same way as when you're a child everything is new, is interesting, is fascinating uh, is captivating and when you're old even in one lifetime you're more uh, relaxed about it, you don't get uh, thrilled about uh, meeting, uh, f feeling a new love or a new interest. You know how things will go and you have kind of a self-knowledge and a world knowledge. And it can be that the physical form therefore is no longer giving you what you need to, to grow. You might start needing impulses on higher levels, you're more interested in the perspective of uh, the spirit. And also in your life you will start to lead a more spiritual life and eventually yeah, you might decide instead of incarnating yourself to become a spirit guide, to use your experience to help others instead of having to go down into the physical form yourself. Um, so in this way it is also possible to outgrow the physical form. The third option is basically for a being which is not so much in this whole process of growing, developing and manifesting, but is mainly sent, it has a mission. So for instance if we look at um, an angel uh, manifesting itself, the angel itself has no desire for, uh, for growth, it only knows the desire of the divine. Um, it also has no desire to manifest its own power, it only knows the will of the divine. So if the divine wishes to manifest itself, it can use the angel to do so with. And the angel can take a physical form or it can take a near physical form, which happens more often, that they will yeah, create an astral body or an ether body to manifest themselves with. Um, but such a body is usually yeah, used and then yeah, discarded because the consciousness of the angel will simply leave it again. And in the same way as a physical body is left behind when our spirit leaves it, it will just start to decay and rot and fall apart again. In the same way an angel's manifestation can be very powerful, can leave a very long mark which is slowly becoming less and less. Um, and yeah, such a being is also not in this whole incarnation and reincarnation process, but it does go through the, through the steps of, uh, of doing that. And a very similar thing may be said of uh, messiahs, like um, people who incarnate with a very specific uh, goal or purpose to liberate other beings. Uh, so Jesus Christ is an example of that, but also uh, lamas are examples of that. Um, so these beings are not really uh, bound to their um, to their form, to their being a physical being, but it can be a choice to in a way allow their consciousness to fall down to a level where they think their wisdom or their knowledge, their light can do the most good. So it is a process of servitude, of self-sacrifice that they take form and they don't of course when they take form they have to abide by the rules and laws of the world they move into and they are limited because they have to leave behind a lot of their skills, powers and insights because they are not meant to manifest 
uh, in these lower worlds. And depending a little bit on how open this connection um, can be or how open it can be maintained, they will have more or less support from these higher worlds, from these higher parts of their own being in fulfilling their mission. So this is also a, a case of incarnation. But usually these beings incarnate while, in a way, you could say, taking the keys on which they need to move back up with them into the form so that they don't get trapped in the lower form. They don't really belong there. They're more like a, um, like an interim. <laughs> um, so you call the employment office like, gosh, we need somebody to fill this position for a while. Okay, I will come down, fulfill this position when the holidays are over, then... Um, yeah, the regulars can take over and I will go back to my own place. So in a very similar way these higher beings can go down do a little stint, a lifetime or a few lifetimes of being incarnated into these lower forms and then go back to a place which is more natural to them uh, where they don't feel as yeah, compact, compacted, as limited as they do in the lower vibrations. In general, being in a higher vibration is considered to be a pleasurable experience, while being in a lower vibration is considered to be a more confining experience. The opposite is also in a way true, um, because the what we in a way try to do as uh, beings which are growing in complexity we are trying to encompass all these lower dimensions and pull them together on a higher level. So we exist on a level above fear and pain and fear and pain become all different components, all these lower vibrations become components of our consciousness on our current level. And our method of evolution is by going higher and higher, the way the top of the pyramid is rising and more and more elements from more and more layers of consciousness can be encompassed and controlled by the pinnacle of our consciousness. So you could say we're building up a pyramid where the top is our, our spirit and our spirit can rise to higher and higher levels and control more and more of the universe. Um, but it is also very possible to come down with more a pillar-like structure where you are there for one purpose, for one mission, uh, to do one thing, uh, instead of accumulating all these different things and powers. Um, and it's also possible to have more of a, um, you could say, an inversed pyramid uh, form of incarnation, where you know certain powers and principles on a higher level, and you try to combine them into one thing, into, for instance, a new ideology. Like these inverse pyramid uh, forms of consciousness are often seen in, in great philosophers who actually have an understanding of the cosmos on a higher level. People like uh, Rudolf Steiner, for instance. And they try to form that and to condense that into yeah, books, teachings, uh, a method of life, a spiritual path. So we ha all have very different forms and often certain forms are used only for one incarnation, especially the philosopher form. Um, it's a form which is only used once, usually you create a philosophy, you give it to the world and then after you've given it, it is up to the people who have received it whether they want to follow it or not, whether they want to work with it, grow with it and develop it, or whether they will just forget it and discard it. Uh, but your mission, having given, having made the knowledge available to them, um, is done. Okay, I hope this answers a little bit of the question of how it goes with the process of incarnating only once or several times. And what the purposes are of these different attitudes towards incarnation.